My name is Professor Paul Wells. I am the director of the Animation Academy at Loughborough University uh, in the UK. I've worked in animation, moving image and screenwriting for any number of years. I'm very proud to be one of the judges on the Metaverse professional panel. First thing that comes to my mind about the metaverse is perhaps ironic in the sense that it's uh, an old version, shall we say, of the metaverse. I go back to uh, a film made by Charles and Ray Eames called Powers of Ten, which was a fantastic film that essentially uh, showed how by escalating by the power of ten uh, a, a set of images, you could move from the human body right out to the outer reaches of space or come back down through the human body out to the most microscopic aspect of human existence on Earth. And it largely was a wonderful uh, achievement, especially for its time, in demonstrating all the kind of layers and dimensions of the universe, whether they were played out through the human body, through the Earth, through uh, space itself. So the dynamics and multiplicity of that of that idea really was a first version of the metaverse, in my view. And as a result, it's given me a kind of template to think about the way in which the metaverse can expand and take into account all the aspects of our virtual and uh, analog worlds, but always played out through the body, through our imagination, through our consciousness. And I think that's really what's at the heart of this for me. The kind of work that I expect to see in the, co in the contest is really, uh, I think, going to be very diverse. I think it's going to be very inclusive. I think it's going to reimagine our complex and dynamic and sometimes troubled world in a more utopian sense, in a more dynamic sense that looks progressively to the future and looks to all the kind of potential of our image making uh, to reflect all the potential of the way in which the world could be. And I hope very much that uh, all the participants uh, recognise not merely maybe the dystopian aspects that we can see sometimes in our world, but allow a vision of the metaverse to be something that provides us with an imaginative future, something that recognises all of our potential and recognises that the best applications of human endeavour and creativity through technology and through design can create wonderful utopian vistas. My understanding of the Collidiverse is uh, one that combines the idea of a kaleidoscope looking through uh, a lens uh, at this multiplicity of layers and, and contexts that constitutes the metaverse. And I think it's a wonderful kind of idea to, to take into account in the sense that the telescope or the lens or the way in which we see the world um, is very much about us. It's very much about how we play out our vision through the mechanisms by which we see. And of course, the screen is right at the heart of our culture. So. What I'd like uh, participants to think about uh, in, in terms of the uh, contest and the, and the competition is to think about the ways in which that singular eye, the way in which you look through the kaleidoscope and you can see all of those patterns, all the kinds of things that you imagine the world to be, is to reimagine them writ large, to imagine them on the grandest of spaces, but nevertheless, to come back to you and say, what does that metaverse mean to you? How do you want to describe that? How do you want to design it? How do you want to imagine it? In relation to the way in which the metaverse might be understood in Web3, I think there's the most dynamic of possibilities. Animation has always been the most versatile and flexible of, of expressive visual forms. And the whole kind of dynamic of the way in which the image moves through 360 spaces, through cross-planar, through multi-planar spaces, and the way in which it can move into lateral and linear dimensions simultaneously allows us the opportunity to think about space in a completely different way and design, therefore, in a way that uh, can facilitate that space to create new environments, new vistas, 
new ways of imagining what the human condition can be. And I think this is really the kind of way in which our technologies are moving, that ultimately, however uh, grounded our everyday lives might be and how problematic our everyday lives might be, uh, the vision of the metaverse and the way in which we can understand our potential through that gives kind of designers and imaginative people and people working in animation wonderful opportunities to create new imagery. In every creative practice, I think, uh, there's the sense in which uh, people can uh, imagine perfectly well, they can visualize perfectly well, they can actually let their ideas run ahead of them in a hugely kind of, uh, you know, uh, provocative and uh, powerful way sometimes. But I think there's a couple of things that, that always uh, creatives have to keep an eye on. One, crucially, the audience. Who do you want to actually speak to and why do you want to speak to them and why will your design, why will your imagination speak to them? And the other thing is around aesthetics. Creators and imaginative people, of course, often get very seduced by aesthetics. The whole idea that it can look absolutely fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. But I always believe that the aesthetics must suit their purpose. They must actually be tuned to actually best express the design as a model of communication, as a model of affecting people. So at the heart of that is make me care. It's about the way in which you provoke emotion in people ultimately through your imagination and through your design that actually connects them, informs them and inspires them. And so those are the things that I would say to concentrate on.